Okay, so we are in, uh, I think, week four of our series, Healing is Possible. Tell the person next to you, say, Healing is Possible. Healing is Possible. We like that, right? That sounds really good, uh, but the, excuse me, the problem is that, that sometimes we just struggle to believe it, right? Like, like in theory, yes, healing is possible, but, but we're struggling to, to, to understand that right now. Think of it this way. Maybe we're in the midst of grief, and we believe that, that healing from this grief is possible, but right now we're just trying to go one day without crying. Right? Maybe we're in the midst of chronic pain, and we believe, we, we do believe that, that God can do amazing things and miracles can happen. We do believe that, that we can experience healing, but right now, just give me one day without pain meds. Right, we believe that, that God can heal our marriage. We do believe it, but I just got to go one day without arguing with my spouse, maybe. Right, we believe that healing is possible, but right now we're not really feeling it so much. Like, like we believe that, that God can, has blessed us in the past, and, and we do believe that, that God can bless us in the future, but right now we're just not feeling it. How many of you guys have, have ever been in that situation where you just don't feel like, like, like we're doing really good in our faith, that we don't feel like we can actually experience healing, like, like we know this feeling. God has blessed us in the past. We know God's going to bless us in the future, but right now, oh, we're just trying to get one foot in front of the other just to try to make it through. The past and the future, right? Those are two really key aspects of the Christian faith, the past and the future. Think about it, like, like the foundations of our faith are built in the past, right? Our sacred text was written in the past. The life, death, and resurrection of our Savior is a past event. The past is pretty crucial to the Christian faith. But so is the future, right? I mean, because we are, we are a people of hope, and it's just not, not simply stuff that has happened in the past. We have a hope in the future, we have a hope that one day uh, we, we get to, to experience eternity with God in heaven. We have hope that one day, uh, you know, we can experience freedom from the, 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 the suffering and the pain of our life. Like the past and the future are key aspects. But what about today? What about right now? Hebrews puts it this way. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do we believe that? Do we believe that, that healing was possible, and we believe that, that healing is possible, but do we believe today, March 7th, 2021, that healing is possible for whatever you're going through today? Today, that's my, my hope as we dive into scriptures to showcase a few things to us, that he isn't just a God who has done great things. He is that. He isn't just a God that will do great things. He is that too. But he is a God who is doing great things in your life. I have to squint. I have to look. But he's right there. He's doing great things today. And I don't know what we're coming in with. I don't know the struggles that we have uh, just to get in the door. I don't know all the issues we face, whether you're here in person, whether you're watching online. But today we're going to see that, that God brings healing today. To see this play out, I want you to grab your Bibles if you have a Bible, uh, and if you don't, uh, go to the YouVersion app. I, I want you to, to do this, all right? We're going to have it on the screen, but there's a reason why I want you to actually look this up, all right? Uh, and so uh, turn to uh, Psalm 23. We're going to be uh, kind of seeing how, how God is the, the God of today in one of the, the most famous Psalms there is, Psalm 23. Many of you have heard this. Um, some of you might have it memorized. Some of you, maybe there's going to be certain aspects of it. Oh, I remember that. I've, I heard that verse whenever I was a kid. Uh, but I just want to kind of dive into this together to see that God is great today. Okay, let's, let's read this uh, together. You follow along as I read it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
My guess is you've heard this. But have you really owned this? I want to do something. I'm, just, I'm going to read that again. And um, I just want you to bow your heads. And I want you to close your eyes right now. Let's just, let's just go and, and start today just kind of in this posture of prayer. And, and, and as I read it, I want you to pray through this. That the Lord is your shepherd. So I, whatever issues you're facing, may this just be an encouragement for whatever's going on in your life. The Lord is my shepherd. Do you believe that? Claim it today. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Do you believe this? He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and maybe that's where you're at today, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It doesn't stop there. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Listen to the blessing in this. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. A passage full of hope and promise. A passage full of hope and promise for today. March 7th, 2021. The big idea of the week, what I want you to really zero in, if you only take one thing from today, it's this idea that the Lord is our shepherd today. Everybody say today. today. The Lord is our shepherd today. So uh, three weeks ago, and it's hard to believe that it's only been three weeks, but three weeks ago we had that sporadic uh, Saturday night service. Raise your hand if you were at that Saturday night service, okay? So we called an audible last second because of that big storm that was coming, and so uh, we, we decided to have church on Saturday night. And if you remember, we talked about um, the pain uh, kind of progress, right? The, the, the realities of, of the conflicts in our life that, that many of us have experienced uh, personal pain, uh, physical pain, emotional pain, or trauma, right? But I think we can all relate to the fact that if you're experiencing physical pain or emotional pain, it doesn't stop with the pain, does it? Right? Oftentimes, the, the, the trial we went through when we were young or what we're going through today, this pain is like a giant stone being thrown into a perfectly calm pond, right? It hits and then ripple effects. And so the pain of our life, and maybe it was a decade ago or maybe it was yesterday, the pain of our life has massive ripple effects in everyday life, how we lead it, right? I mean, it just, it just does. It doesn't stop with the actual pain. It leads to things like emotional despair, right? The, the trauma or the pain that happened leads us to a, a season of grief, a season of depression, anxiety, overwhelm, right? There, there's this emotional toll that this physical thing or emotional thing has had on my life. But it doesn't stop there, right? Oftentimes, it, it leads us to a place where we become... Uh, distant with God, right? It leads us to a place where a loving God surely wouldn't put me through this, and so, so we, we get mad, we get frustrated, and, and maybe we, we grow in apathy, and God just feels so distant, and maybe we get to a point where, where we once believed, but now we don't, because if God was real, this wouldn't have happened, but it did, so we must not be real, and so, so we have this, this massive ripple effect from the event, Right? But it keeps going, and maybe it shows itself in, in how we treat others. Right? We become short-fused with our spouse, the people that usually mean the most to us. We start to just, just always be on their case. And it starts to show itself in the sin that we have and the struggles that we have, that, that the event has a massive ripple effect. See, here's the reality. There are people in here today that were on this. We're in the middle of this. We're experiencing the pain of that event. The event was in the past, but, but it's something that is still affecting us today. And so my hope is, and I want you to grab your Bibles, uh, my hope is um, as we go through the first three verses of Psalm 23, we're going to see how this can be impact, uh, can, can bring healing today. All right, Psalm 23. I'm going to read those first three verses again. We're going to spend a, a few weeks in Psalm 23 because there's just so much here that I just don't want to speed through it. Um, so I want to read this again. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. We're going to stop right there. Let's see. Psalm 23. The Lord is our shepherd today. All right, so there's a few things I want to talk about this uh, with this. The first thing is, is the very first sentence. The Lord is my shepherd right? The Lord is my shepherd. Do we believe that today? See, here's the reality. That's kind of a strange analogy, and we've talked about this before, 
In our modern context, it, like we're, we're not a shepherd culture, that, that if we just taken it at the surface level, that's kind of weird to us. We don't do that. But if we can get an understanding of what's going on here, if we can get an understanding of what's really being said, then it's going to really breathe life into the exact issues we're facing today. Because the reason that I wanted you to grab your Bibles is that I want you to look at Psalm 23, and I want you to see that second word, the Lord, right? Notice that the Lord is in all caps. This is crucial, okay? And we've talked about this before, but it's worth saying again. See, our tendency when we read, the Lord is my shepherd, we, we use it as, uh, we, we think Lord like he's the Lord of the manor, or he is my Lord and Savior. This is a different word completely, right? And it's a word we often just blow past. My guess is you memorize this, if you have this memorized, is the Lord is my shepherd. And we tend to think it's the same use as the word Lord in the New Testament. It's not. It's different. It's in, it's in all caps for a very specific reason and a reason that can impact us today. See, every time you look in the Old Testament, you're going to see this a lot in the Old Testament, you're going to find that in reference to God the Father, Lord is in all caps every time, right? But there's a reason that, that, that it's this way. It's, it's, it's speaking of Yahweh, the name of God the Father. See, when you see uh, L-O-R-D in all caps, the reality is it's capital Y-H-W-H in the original language, Yahweh. If you're ever bored, and some of you are like, that's right now with this whole language thing. If you're ever bored, Google the word tetragrammaton. Okay, Just, just tetragrammaton. Now, I don't know what tetragrammaton sounds like to you. It sounds like to me like something on the space shuttle or something, tetragrammaton. I don't know. Tetragrammaton, as weird as it is, is the name of the four-letter symbol that is Y-H-W-H. It is the, the name of the symbol that represents the name of God the Father, Yahweh. So when you read this, And it says, the Lord is my shepherd, and Lord is in all caps, Yahweh is your shepherd. God the Father is your shepherd. And this is huge. There's a reason why we can go to church our entire life. We can be raised in church and like be unfamiliar with this. There's a reason that that, that maybe the term Yahweh seems kind of foreign to us. There's an actual reason for this. It's because in the, the, the early days of uh, of Jewish tradition, it, you, you couldn't say the name Yahweh. It was, it was too reverent to even speak. Right? That's not biblical. That's just the, the Jewish tradition. And so when they translated the Bible, all right, newsflash, the Bible was not written in English. All right? uh, when they translated the Bible into English to keep you from saying the name of God the Father, uh, they used Lord, all caps. So every time you see Lord in all caps, it's Yahweh, the name of God the Father. And this is what like, just can lead us to, to really being blown away by the Scripture. So grab your Bibles, flip over to Psalm 148. All right, Psalm 148. Because this, this really comes alive when we understand that, that Lord is an actual name. Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, or yod Hey vav Hey in the Hebrew. All right, this is, it really comes alive right here in Psalm 148. This is what it says. Praise the Lord. I don't know if it is in here. It's not in all caps here because everything's in all caps. But it, Lord is all caps. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the sky. Let, let them praise the name of Yahweh. For he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass. So in, especially in Psalms, when you see the, the term praise the name of the Lord, it's, it's praise the name of Yahweh. And this is what just can, can blow your mind when you hear that, that Yahweh is your shepherd. That here, David, King David, is, is declaring that, that Yahweh is, is his shepherd. That's almost preposterous. Think about it, right? It's almost like ridiculous that these two words are in the same sentence, right? Here you have the creator God. 
The God that, that, that formed the stars in the sky. The God that created everything that we see. The God that knit you together in your mother's womb. The God of the, the, the miracles of the Old Testament. You know, where Moses, the, the Red Sea parts and fire comes down from heaven and people are raised from the dead. Like, like this God mentioned in the same breath as the lowest on the social ladder, a shepherd? It's ridiculous, really. If you, if, if you don't have scripture to back it up, it's, it is preposterous. That the God of, of the great grandeur of society and, and of all creation is the God that cares about you so much so that he's, he's willing to walk through life's ups and downs with you? Yes, he is. And this is what makes the Christian faith so incredible because it would be ridiculous. Here's some other scriptures just to kind of show you. Uh, the shepherd and the rock of Israel in Genesis 49 Isaiah 40, uh, 11 puts it this way. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. You see, David, who wrote Psalm 23, he was a shepherd when he was young. You guys know that. So that means he has a very unique perspective. He knows exactly what he's saying when he says, Yahweh is my shepherd. He knows of the, the nurturing care needed for a shepherd. He knows of the protect, protecting nature uh, of, of a shepherd. He knows that a sheep is hopeless without the right shepherd. And so he's saying this, that, that Yahweh himself is the one that guides and leads and, and cares and tends to those of us as we go through life. Whatever you're going through today, yes, he's done great things. Yes, he's going to do great things. But today, he is with you. Today, he is, he is alongside of you. He's leading you and guiding you through whatever is on your, your forefront today. Today, as you face the frustration from another day where you woke up with chronic pain. Today, as you have to have that difficult conversation with the family member. Today, as you, you woke up, checked your bank account, and once again, it's in the red. Right? Today, as you are facing the realization that you have uh, a diagnosis that no one in the room knows about, and, and, and you're overwhelmed, but he knows, and he's there. He's there with you. And we can go through life, and we can feel so alone. But my encouragement today is know that God the Father, Yahweh, he is your shepherd. And this is what makes the claim of Jesus Christ in John 10, like, scandalous. Right? If you've ever read John 10, you know that Jesus says that, that he is the good shepherd. Right? Have you ever had somebody come up to you and say, you know, Jesus never claimed to be God. He just claimed to be on the same scale as Yahweh. He's, he's declaring his divinity when he says he's the good shepherd because everyone knows, remember, like they know the original language. Everyone knows that Yahweh is the good shepherd. He is the shepherd. David declared it hundreds and hundreds of years before. And here Jesus is saying the same thing. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Present tense. Did you catch that? I lay down my life for the sheep. At this very second, you are so deeply cared for by your Father in heaven, by your personal Savior. He cares for you. He loves you. He's with you. So much so that Jesus Christ is willing to lay down his life for you so that you can spend eternity in heaven with him. This is the picture of Psalm 23. You're like We're just in the first sentence. We're right here in the first sentence, and it's a showcase that God Almighty is not a God who created and then stepped away. All right, get this. Like, like many of us, like, like we can mentally like, like begin to, to grasp the idea that God created. We look in, at, at creation, we think, okay, like this is, this is too much. This can't be chance, right? We've seen the, the images of Mars, of all the, the rover that's on Mars. Like we've seen that, and it's like, okay, like this is too amazing to just be circa, just, just coincidence, right? Like we believe that, that God is creator, but it's easy to believe that he created and then he stepped off because we don't feel him in our life sometimes. But understand, Psalm 23 is declaring he created, he's Yahweh, he created and then he stepped in, right? He steps into your circumstance, whatever you're going through. He is your shepherd. May we remember that today. 
Right? The, the passage keeps going. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. I'm going to say that again because that is like the most refreshing thing that, that could ever be. Like, let's just think about this. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. It's a picture of three things. It's a picture of abundance, of tranquility, and of restoration. Those three things sound amazing, don't they? abundance, tranquility, restoration. Like all of us are like, yep, sign me up. That's what I want. Abundance, tranquility, restoration. Maybe you're like, like, like you're in a season of life where you're just trying to pay the bills, like just, just trying to make ends meet. And, and the idea of abundance, my goodness, like, yes, sign me up. Maybe you're in the midst of, of raising kids and they're in the home and the idea of sweet, glorious tranquility? Are you kidding? <laughs> tranquility? I haven't experienced that in a long time, right? And you're like, oh, like just, just give me one night with no dishes, no dinner. Like, I, I don't have to, to get somebody to bed. Like, some of you are like, oh my gosh, like, that sounds amazing. It sounds glorious, right? Tranquility. Maybe, maybe some of us, maybe you're retired, and, and maybe you're in a season where, where life is just kind of getting routine, and nothing sounds better than a little getaway, just send me on a little one-week getaway just to, to revive and just get, get excited about life again. Man, that sounds amazing. Let's go to the beach. Let's go on a cruise. Let's, let's do something. Like, like all of us love the idea of abundance, tranquility, and restoration. The problem is we often have the complete wrong definitions for these words. Right? Take the word uh, abundance. Abundance. We hear that and we tend to think earthly possession. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with earthly possession. Now, there's going to be really, uh, you know, convincing pastors. They're, they're going to be on TV or whatever. They're going to tell you that if you love Jesus enough, you're going to, you're going to reap the benefits. All right? If you love Jesus enough, you're going to experience, like, earthly abundance. I mean, that sounds great, right? Except that there's, there's like a major problem with this. What does Jesus tell the rich man when the rich man's inquiring about uh, eternal life? What does he say? Get rid of it. Go sell it. It doesn't matter. Right? And so, so we think like, like abundance, no, like, like stuff. This sounds amazing. And so we spend our life trying to, to gain this. But understand this. There are followers of Jesus that live in huts that have more abundance than Americans that have six-figure incomes and sweet rides. All right? Like, like if we can understand, like, abundance is not stuff. Abundance is provision from God. It's blessing from Him. It's, it's, it's His abundance. It's His life, like, pouring out on our life, and this is a game-changer, that we can experience this, this abundance. We're going to be... Uh, here in a few months, going into one of these situations again, where we're going to go to El Salvador here uh, in just a few months. Raise your hand if you've ever been to El Salvador with us. There's a few of us in this, this room. So the reality is, uh, because of COVID, we haven't been going on mission trips. We missed last year's. Uh, but in June, the first week in June, we're going to be going again to, uh, to El Salvador to minister to the people there and to, uh, to be a part of a, a Christian school that's there, help on some, some building projects. And we're going to have a, uh, an info meeting on March 28th, if you're just somewhat interested. All right, you're not signing up to go, but somewhat interested. Uh, it's going to be the first week in June, uh, but that, that info meeting on March 28th. And when you're there, you're going to see people that have nothing. I mean, they have nothing. Their house is literally a pallet wall with a tarp roof. They have abundance, right? Because they have the Spirit of God in their life, and it's evident in the way that they, they lead their life. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. Not that they're going to be rich. Abundance, tranquility, and restoration. We spend our lives often trying to pursue these very things because we want them. Right, everyone here, everyone watching at home, like, like we want these things. And so we, we take the job that, that tends to lead to more abundance. We, we, we've picked the path in life that tends to lead to more tranquility. And so we, we do whatever it takes to attain these things, yet oftentimes we're going down the wrong path. 
See, we say we want, uh, want abundance, right? We say we want abundance, but what we really want is more money. Green pastures aren't for bigger bank accounts. Green pastures are for spiritual nourishment that only He can provide, right? We say we want tranquility. What we really want is just to be able to have time to veg out on Netflix. That's what we really want. We want more Netflix and more sleep. That's not what calm waters bring. Calm waters bring tranquility to the soul, that you can be in the midst of the most stressful season of work, in the midst of pain and suffering, but there's tranquility. This only comes through Him. We say we want restoration, but maybe what we really want is just to get rid of that feeling of guilt that we have for that thing that we did last week. The presence of God, it doesn't, it doesn't just get rid of like, the guilt. It get rid, gets rid of the whole sin. right? Like, like it's, We're short-selling it here. It's so much more than, than we can fathom. The Lord is my shepherd. Ezekiel says this. I will, uh, God says this right here in Ezekiel. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in the good grazing land. There they will feed in the rich pasture on the mountain of Israel. My hope today is that we begin to understand if we long for abundance, tranquility, and restoration, it's only going to be found in Him. It's only going to be found is if, if He is our shepherd, not other things. Because it's, it's noticeable you know, in all of our lives when, when the Lord is not our shepherd, when Yahweh is not our shepherd, it begins to show in different areas, right? Maybe we're, we're in this, the, the middle of this little conflict season and we can't get out of it. We've been in it for forever, right? We've been mad at God for forever. We've been mad and, and frustrated and, and, and anxious forever, and we're not getting out of it, right? Maybe we've been irritable for a really long season because we're just oh, we're so frustrated at life that nothing seems to be going right. It's often because we have put other things as our shepherd, as the one leading us, right? We, we know this, like, like maybe it is finances are our shepherd. Wealth, gaining wealth, that's our shepherd, that's our guide. Do whatever it takes to gain more money. Maybe, I mean, like in the season we're in, maybe it's political, right? Maybe our, our political party is our shepherd, Right? And so, so we determine our views, whatever our political party, they're, they're the ones leading us. And so if something goes great, we're, all, we're doing great. If something goes bad, we're doing terrible. The political party is to never be our shepherd. Yahweh is not second to any, even a political party. And so, so we make these other things our guide. Right? Like... like selfish things and, and, and prideful things and things that look really good, but we often make these other things our guide, but it is Yahweh that is to be our guide. If you want abundance, tranquility, and restoration, it's only going to come if we uh, allow the Lord to be our shepherd. That's it. The big idea of the week, the Lord is our shepherd today. Whatever you're going through in life, may we remember that Yahweh, every time we read it in the Old Testament, all caps uh, the, the word Lord. But this is the name of God the Father. It's a name we should be teaching our children. It's a name we should be praising constantly. We're going to sing a praise song concerning that name here in a second. But may we remember that Yahweh is our shepherd. And may we remember that the only way to have abundance, tranquility, and restoration, the things mentioned in those first few verses, the only way is to make the Lord our shepherd. As heads are bowed and, and eyes are closed, I want to read this passage to you. So we have an action step I want to, want to lead us to. This, the passage is Psalm 42, 1 through 2. It says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I have an action step for you as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Sit in the pasture and drink the water. Sit in the pasture and drink from the waters. Here's the deal. What does that mean? If you're not a follower of Jesus today, and you've, you've come to church, or maybe you're watching online, but he's not your shepherd, today is, is to make God our shepherd, to make the Lord our shepherd, to make Yahweh our shepherd, to make Jesus our shepherd. 
So maybe it's to to confess our sins and to declare that he is to be the one that is to lead our life from this very moment on. To sit in the pasture and drink from the water. If you are a follower of Jesus today, I have a, a huge, impressing concern for you. Church, it is so easy right now to just do the church thing often tie it to a political party and, and we're, we're doing just fine. God, my, my, my challenge to you from God is to lean in to him being the shepherd of your life and this week, finding time to be alone with him. There are people you can come in every single Sunday and you can go every single day of the week without leaning into a relationship with him. My challenge to you is find the time. Find the time to dive into your faith. Find the time to to sit in His goodness, to sit and drink from His waters, read His Word. We We go through week after week after week wondering why we feel so distant from Him when we refuse to even open up His Word and drink from it. Those of you that are married, I want to encourage you to challenge your spouse in this. Challenge your spouse. Challenge your friends. Challenge one another. Challenge your kids to be in the Word of God this week, to spend time diving into Scripture. How dare we be a people that claim Christ yet refuse to listen to His words? As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I just want us to have a time of of really just confession and a time of, of just kind of being vulnerable for a second. I want you to raise your hand. If you're going to be honest with yourself, You haven't made the Lord your shepherd lately. Other things have been your shepherd. I see hands all over the place. Other things are often our shepherd. I want you to raise your hand if you've sought abundance, tranquility, and restoration in anything but our Savior. That's got to be all of us. I got two hands up on that one. Surely the vacation will bring it, right? No, it won't. God, we come to you today so thankful for your love for us, so thankful that though you are the creator God, you are this infinite, all-powerful God of the miracles, the God of these ancient stories, you're the God of, of yesterday, and you're the God of tomorrow, but we thank you so much, God, that you're the God of today. We praise you, Yahweh. And God, may you lead us to that life of abundance, tranquility, and restoration, but may it be because we are leaning into you as our shepherd. Forgive us when we try other things and we try other means to try to attain these things. It's only going to be found in you. May we remember that today. We thank you for the good shepherd that laid down his life for us. And though we are deeply sinful people, we have a Savior who has paid the ultimate price for us so that we can spend eternity with you, so that we can experience the kingdom of heaven right here in the present tense. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.